Thanks for staying with us. So um, we got some comments from our viewers, and um, we'd like to just read those comments now. From Comment one from an anonymous uh, viewer that sent in, he sent in yesterday. He says, more Nigerians watch porn than other African countries, and even co uh, competing with the US. We think these things don't have effect, Shay. We have a pandemic we have refused to address. Um, the internet is facilitating desires that cannot be controlled, and these triggers explode at the wrong time. There was rape before the internet, but we import a lot of things that we are not built to handle. That's from commentor one. So the comment, the second comment goes, good evening, ladies. I actually want to comment on the issue of castration of men. If caught in the act of rape or if, uh, or if confessed to it, my comment is actually my question. Um, my comment is actually a question. A man, as, I'm sorry, as much as I hate to talk about rape because of how despicable the act is, I would like to say that rape should not be expressly attributed to men only. We've had cases of single or group of ladies raping men or having sex with minors as we recently had a case like that in South Africa. My question is what should be done to a woman's private part, he, if caught raping a man or confessed to it, or if caught having sex with a minor. Ladies, raping is not one, a one-way traffic um, discussion for ladies alone as it affects both sexes. So in as much as I agree that it's more common amongst men against women, um, that's uh, from Enoch. I don't know where IB is, he said, but from IB. So tonight we're asking, if there's a justification for rape and what punishment should be meted on the rapist, um, be it male or female, right? So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 We're going to open our phone lines much later. But let me come to EC first. You know, I want to hear your initial thoughts on, you know, most times when we post videos, sorry, when you hear videos of people narrating their rape ordeal, the first question that always comes to mind is, what, what's the person wearing? So is this almost like a justification for the act? Totally no. Because let's look at, let's go back to when we were in the 60s when Queen Elizabeth came to Nigeria. People were actually walking along the streets without wearing anything. And nobody was raped. So a situation whereby you have individuals now saying that it was what she was wearing or how she looked. There was even a, st um, I actually checked something uh, out and I, while the cause of prepping up for this, and I discovered that I had to look at the mind of a rapist. One actually said that he was looking at this, um, his victim and he was getting angry because the victim was arousing him sexually. So he needed to pay her back for doing that. Um, so it's not, it's not her fault. She was just busy walking along the road, not even thinking about what he was even, not even, not even, no, she didn't even have any idea that there was somebody even looking at her. So a situation whereby that individual now said, okay, because she looks like this and she has aroused me sexually, I will take advantage of her and, and, and assault her. Hmm. So you, the mindset of a rapist hmm. is very complex. It's quite very complex. Warped. So there is, it's no totally, justification. There, there is no justification. All right, let me so come ever. to Uti. Yes. Okay, so um, first of all, comment number one. This is how we start to justify these things. When we try to directly link one act to another, um, it's like saying because I watch action movies and I watch people shoot guns, I can go out and stab people and shoot people. There's no justification. I don't care what you're watching. I don't care what you're eating. I don't care what you're smoking. I don't care what you're drinking. There's no justification for it. So let's first of all be clear that one problem has nothing to do with the other problem. Um, for the, the idea in itself um, that we... In this part of the world, let me stick to Nigeria because the second comment talks about the fact that rape is a two-way street. Now, one of the things I think that is out of date in Nigeria is the definition of rape in itself because um, rape currently, based on um, our laws, talks about um, the assault of a woman. 
by a man, you know, and I, I believe in the North, it, it also um, talks about the same with, you know, age bracket. But two things that stood out to me is, yes, one, inadequate, because it doesn't speak of rape of minors and of the male gender. Um, and also, it says that a woman cannot be raped if it is done by her husband and she's above age of puberty, which again, a woman has a right to say no, no matter what. Exactly. And it's shocking to me how many people I have met who have that same impression that a man is entitled to have sex with his wife at any time, whether she says yes or no, it's his right. So even in our mindset or in our laws around rape, we're still behind the times because there is all sorts of sexual harassment. There is, I mean, there's date rape. There's, there's all sorts of things that come into this massive cater. It doesn't have to come to the culmination of, you know, penetration or whatever before you actually call it rape. Sexual harassment is a huge part of it. And, you know, a lot of the times when you don't address sexual harassment that is being done by people, they eventually progress into full-blown rape. So when we also don't acknowledge that these things are problems, we are also part of the problem in allowing this thing to thrive. I mean, forget the culture of silence, forget the culture of familiarity. You know, shockingly for me, so many conversations that I've had with people who were raised in the 80s when it was so normal to have aunties and uncles and all sorts of people going through your houses, so many people were assaulted as children. Exactly. Whether it's full-on rape or whether it was sexual harassment, it's so prevalent amongst a lot of people that I know. So we have a big problem and we have to start to pick apart those problems, starting first of all with going back to what our law says about rape. Because even when we come to castration, we come to, that's in the extreme. But what about molestation? What about all these other things? We haven't even addressed that. I'm happy you're talking so, about molestation, Utia. And I want to read the third um, picture that we have. That says 97% of young women in the UK have been sexually harassed. Right? When this picture was put up, we now got some comments underneath the picture. And somebody says, damn, I thought we got um, them all. Where is that 3% hiding? Oh my goodness. That was one, one person's comment. Um, somebody now says, almost 3% uh, to go, boys. Oh Somebody goodness. says, oh, so there's 3% to go. Another person says, I don't care. I mean, um, I, so someone says, I mean, apparently, whistling is harassment, so whatever. Same for men. They just don't complain about it every five minutes. That's what people are saying. And he says, um, this person, Oli Shepard, says, don't know if I believe it or what are, are you classing as harassment then. Look at you or something... Uh, uh, looking at you or something weirdly, then somebody says, um, this is clearly nonsense. What a shame. Uh, another person says, must be a clap to be in the other 3%. Um, somebody says, they, as, as they deserve. So they, they are sexually harassed as they deserve. And somebody says, so means that 97% of young men in the UK are all rapists and 80% of adult men in the UK are also rapists. That's what it looks like, um, um, addressing the paper that wrote this. It says, um, so, I, ju so, so just reading through all of these comments, I think there's one again that says the number is so high because nowadays things like man spreading and ma man um, planning or commenting are looking at women as seen as, as um, harassment. So there's a thin line here because in the UK, I remember my son was telling me that when he, um, in school, that um, now they are said to them that you cannot put your hand over the shoulder of a girl yeah. because it will be considered as sexual har harassment. So there's a thin line between, you know, harassment, you know, and, you know, um, with the intent. I don't know how to explain it. There's an intent in the heart where somebody says, you know what, I want to deliberately, you know, abuse you. Exactly. And, you know, so how do we, because it's, it seems like these days, and I, I, can, I can understand the sarcasm of some men. Like the one that says, ah, they have 3% to go. You know, because it seems like everything now to a woman is sexual harassment. So did we go overboard with the sexual harassment conversation? Or it is just, um, um, it is just 
what it is, that it is actually sexual harassment. But let me come to Jennifer. I think Jennifer has joined us. Yes. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, I think for when we say, are we going overboard with the sexual harassment conversation, sometimes when you bring up topics like this, you hear men saying, oh, the topic is overflowed, we're talking about it too much, and all of that. And I believe that the reason why the reason why we are talking about this so much now is because in time past, a lot of people have been silent about these things. So now women are saying, no, we don't want to be silent anymore. Men who have been sexually harassed and who have a voice and have found their voice are also saying, no, we don't want to be silent anymore. We need to talk about these things. We actually need to bring it to light. We need to start exposing people. And, you know, there were some things that a lot of people felt like, oh, it's not sexual harassment. Oh, I'm not harassing you. I'm just asking you if you want to do something. Oh, I'm just coercing you and all of that. And till now, a lot of people still don't know that coercion is actually wrong. Like you said, there is a thin line between asking for something and pressuring somebody to do what they do not want to do. I think that 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 part of what that's one of the things we actually need to start educating people on coercion, what sexual harassment means, and and there is one thing that I, I found out in recent times. Now, a lot of men who are um, who are speaking for rape, sexual harassment, who are saying, oh, it's not true, women are overflogging it. Now, guess what? We know that homosexuality is now very prevalent in our society. It is out there. You're seeing a lot of people coming out saying, oh, I'm gay, I'm this. Now, guess what? When a gay man is moving towards a heterosexual man, he finds it offensive. When a gay man tries to talk to a man who is straight, he feels he's sexually harassed. Mm -hmm. Even They would not even allow him hug him. And, and, and a, straight man, a straight man would not allow a gay man hug him because he feels like, oh, what if this guy is trying to touch me or what if he's, he's trying to do something to me? Now, if you feel that type of way, then why are you, why are you exempting it to women? Why do you feel like Women shouldn't feel that type of way when you're coming onto them so strong. And I like I like people to I, I I would encourage people to try to put themselves in people's shoes most of the time, because sometimes you don't know how the next person is feeling until you put yourself in their shoes, until you can actually immerse yourself in their experience, in what they are feeling, in what they are going through. That's the only time, or that's the only way you can actually fully understand. The, the gravity of these actions. But, but yeah. All right. So let me. I want to talk about the, this, what she just talked about has given me an idea about um, a research I also conducted. And it, it talks about the types of rapists. Okay, and they said that there, we have the disadvantaged ones, those men or those individuals who feel that oh they haven't been given. Um, um, was um, some sort of validation or some sort of uh, um, whatever in the society. So they are the downtrodden actually. So they take advantage of those who they think are on top. Then we also have the specialized rapists. The specialized rapists are those that are sexually aroused. They just see the lady and they just all the, the victim and they just want to pounce. And they also have the opportunistic rapist. Mm -hmm. The opportunistic rapist is the individual who believes that I can do this and I can get away with it. So if he has that opportunity or she has that opportunity, she can actually or he can actually take advantage of the victim. Mm -hmm. Then we have the partner rapist where um, I think Uti said something about it. Husbands. Husbands or spouses mm -hmm. actually or come back yeah. or come back and attack the um, spouse or ex-spouse. Mm. So we, then finally we have the high mating effort rapist and these are individuals who do not, they have a problem with their esteem. They, they, they feel you can't tell me no. So the moment you say no to them, they, they just it's flip. Trigger. They just flip, hmm. you know. So these individuals, they are different. We need to encourage or en enlighten, let me use that word. Mm. We need to enlighten 
people on the types of rapists, the signs to look out for, the people or the individuals that can actually take advantage of um, children or women or, or, or young boys in the process. The moment we, they, they, they touch them in a particular way, they, they look at them in a particular way, if for any reason you don't feel comfortable, step back. Absolutely. It's important. Okay, so we're going to just take a very short break. We hope we can open the phone lines today because we're having difficulties, but we'll open the phone lines when we return to continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.